Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Man, we truly value the fact that you guys tune in to our podcast, Shelly and I at the CTDW, the Christian Theological Dark Web. Guys, this week is Passover week, Pesach, a super special and important week for us as believers. We remember Christ's sacrifice, his death, his resurrection, and ultimately, his timeless victory. As that is the case, we wanted to give you guys the opportunity to really take advantage of being able to absorb the information that we're talking about this week because it is so important. Because the content itself was fairly lengthy and has been getting more lengthy, we've decided to take our podcasts and actually break them into two parts. So this first part that you're watching now is actually releasing today, Friday the 7th, which is Good Friday. And the next part we'll be releasing on the 9th, which is Palm Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Uh, we did this so you guys can better engage with the information, not feel too overwhelmed or overloaded, and really kind of just make the most of it. Please continue to give us feedback. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you like, what you don't. Uh, we really just want to be a blessing and continue to give you the information that we are learning and discovering uh, along with you guys. So going forward, if we do decide to break up any more episodes, they will be releasing on a weekly basis, which is awesome. You guys will get a a luxurious dose of us once every week. Uh, so it'll be releasing one Monday and then the following Monday if it's a two-part episode. Well, we love you guys from the Christian Theological Dark Web. From Shelly and I, God bless. We love you all. Shalom and Maranatha. And in charge. Here we go. Um, welcome, guys. We have just started this episode. We have barely, in the last 30 minutes or so, decided on the actual title for this particular episode. Although we had mostly the title, right? So we, we pretty much right. had the title. Um, we are, you are continuing on the, the Serpent and the Seed. That's yes. the, uh, the name of our series at the moment. Um, if it's not self explanatory, Humans are the seed, the seed of the woman, and the serpent is, well, it goes without saying, if you had know any kind of allegory in the Judeo-Christian world, the serpent is the, the devil. Yes. Good old, not so good, Satanas. <laughs> um, he is old, though. He is of old. So today, we are actually, our, um, our episode, excuse me, is titled The, the Lion, the Lamb. And the subjugator of death. Hmm. And you like how I put that emphasis on death as it should be, because he subjugates mm -hmm. death. We're talking about Christ typology today, um, largely. And this is actually because we are coming up on, and I hope I say this right, um, for all my Jewish friends or, you know, Messianic friends, whatever it may be, um, Pesach, Pesach, um, apparently, you know, I go to a Hispanic church, so we say Pasach. I don't know how to say it right. When can I, you know, I'm not going to try and kid anybody. We're going to be talking a lot of, a little bit about Passover, um, a little bit about communion, how they're relevant together. Talking about last week, we talked about Proto Evangelion, which was the very first prophecy, very first mention, which was actually to the serpent uh, of all people to give it to um, regarding the coming redeemer and slayer of all that is evil. Um, so today we are touching on those themes on um, essentially the Abraham, well, the Genesis 22 account, which is Abraham and Isaac on Mount Moriah, the significance of that, the lamb that was promised, who was slain and who was overcome. And what does that include? That's important, too. That's something that mm -hmm. we will be talking about. Right. Um, we talked a little bit about it last time and uh, we'll certainly continue to talk about it. As we are coming upon Passover, this uh, episode in particular, if you're watching, it is either Good Friday or beyond, um, because that's when we're going to release this bad boy a little bit early mm -hmm. um, for all, uh, you know, for spiritual, religious purposes. Um, well, real quick, I'm going to let Shelly take over. We I think we both did a fair amount of research before this one. 
Um, so this is going to be an interesting one. There's some ca- there's some caveats and questions we're not super sure about, which is up to you as the viewer to make this, some decisions and give some feedback on. So please keep those mm-hmm. thinking caps on, that heart open, and those eyes focused on what we're talking about today. And give us your feedback. If you know something we don't or you oh, disagree, all the more. Bring it to us, baby. Um, so just a quick plug in real quick, guys, you can follow us at solo.to slash the C T D W that will get you to our email, to all of our social media, to our Patreon site, where you can, um, you can, uh, support us if you'd like to for as little as five bucks a month that will get you, uh, once we have some supporters, we don't have any yet. That's okay. <laughs> um, but actually really and truly we are, um, trying to set up a paywall so that we can do additional content. And mm-hmm. uh, start posting that all over the internet. Uh, YouTube, if they'll let us, Rumble, they definitely will. So, you know, you'll be seeing mm-hmm. us on those platforms. We're already on YouTube as well. And I believe the um, uh, link tree, solo.to slash the CTDW, I believe YouTube is listed on there as well. So that is really it. Without further ado, I will not take up any more time, Shell. <laughs> it's all you, buddy. Thank you. Our commercial break is over. <laughs> Thank you for watching. This has been CTW Studios. Goodbye. Good night. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, peace out. Um... <laughs> Shalom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you sounded like um, the genie <laughs> on Aladdin. <laughs> you know what? We referenced the genie at the very beginning of our last, last episode, week. too. The episodes are here, 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 here. Anyway, <laughs> good old Robin oh, Williams. Good old Robin He's, Williams. The spirit of Robin <laughs> Williams is coming back to haunt our podcast. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's so great. Um, It's funny. We started with the lion, but we're going to start with the lamb. And we'll, mm-hmm. we'll spend... Um, a good portion of our time this episode speaking of the lamb um, obviously John the baptizer Jesus cousin um, is doing his thing in in the the Jordan River and uh, Jesus comes up and in some of John's followers who later become Jesus followers um, Andrew and John, I believe it is, are um, are there with him. And the baptizer says, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And that seems like such a weird thing um, to reference somebody as, you know. Um, I'm going to go see Toby Mack and um david crowder this week and i am super stoked because i I am a i'm a big crowder fan i love t-mac don't get me wrong man and and his reaction to um his son's passing has shown Mm. um the body of christ a good example of how to grieve and how to overcome um and and I'm really impressed with them. But like if I was to say, Behold, T Mac <laughs> The purveyor of music, you'd oh, be like man. if you didn't know who he was, and if you don't know who he is, you ought to find out for one thing. Um I suggest I suggest you go all the way back to the DC talk days. Down the with beginning. the DC talk. <laughs> talk about Jesus Freak, <laughs> which is really one of my favorite songs. That's the song is going to be in my head for a little bit. But, um, you know, you'd be like, "What are you talking about?" However, when John told his followers, "Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world," they knew immediately who Jesus was talking to. If you are not a Christian in modern day America, you'd be like, well, what the heck does a lamb have to do with what Jesus was? And he, you know, just like a, a good prophet, a smart man, whatever. Um, 
and, and you wouldn't get the lamb reference. So this is what we're going to do tonight. We're going to flesh out the lamb reference so that by the time um, we're done with this this evening, you will understand that reference like those first century Jewish men did, mm -hmm. like, like they got it. So like Rick said, we're going to go all the way back to the beginning, Genesis 22. And I um, will give you the lowdown the way I do when, when I talk to my kids or my husband or anybody, honestly, if, if I'm telling uh, history to them, I'll kind of uh, break it down this way. So we know dude name Abraham and we're in Genesis 2-2, 22. Um, Abraham is God's friend, right? He, um, old dude before he ever had his, his um, first child, older dude when he had the son of promise. So um, God promises Abraham you're going to have a, you're going to have a son. I am going to make your descendants more numerous than the sands, um, on the earth, man, you can't count them stars in the sky, lay down, go ahead, try to count them. You can't do it. Your descendants, that many. And it, Abraham is 75 plus years at this point. And his wife's no spring chicken either. He, it wasn't a May, December relationship or anything. It was, really close in years pretty equal she may have been like uh, what 20 25 years younger than than him max and um they're well past menopause they're past womenopause mm -hmm. too and um uh abraham's wife sarah says you know what just take my take my servant lady and get a kid off of her and i'll raise it and he does what she says whole mess we'll we'll get into to that at, at a um so there's a 10-year difference that was it 10 year 10 year difference i mean that's meh that's acceptable anywhere um, she was younger right well thank heavens <laughs> usually the case right <sighs> who wants to be nursing a kid <laughs> when you're 85 instead of you know 65 mm. um so anyhow, uh, there's the whole Hagar and Ishmael story. And if you want to know it, it's between Genesis 6 and Genesis 22. You can find it pretty easily. <laughs> really cool story. Poor Hagar. The man. short version is uh, that Sarah and Abraham wanted to help God. And so Sarah's like, here, here's Hagar, your servant. No, always a good idea. Me. Always yeah, works always out awesome. well. Let me help Forever. God. Supreme being of the universe. Here, he looks like you need some help. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't make us or anything <clears throat> just just ramifications the middle east today there you go good job sarah good job abraham um but then god oh, still just dis despite their meddling god stays true to his promise because that's what he does when we're faithless mm -hmm. he is faithful yeah. and he gives abraham child name isaac because he catches her snickering in the background when um, <laughs> when God and in, two of the angels got in the form of um, the second Yahweh, which we we will dissect maybe later. But the second Yahweh, I'm sure Jesus before his um, birth here, because again, he's timeless, right? Be the word tells us before the foundations of the earth, Christ died for us. Before the fountain, before let, let, he already was. So he can come and go anytime he wants on earth. And, and we'll also flesh that out more when we talk about angels in mankind and God visiting mankind. Um, mm -hmm. Right? A lot, there's a lot to unpack there. So um, we will wait for a time when we can unpack it by itself or at least as as the primary um topic mm -hmm. isaac means laughter because like i said sarah's snickering in the tent god hears and he says you're going to call this child laughter and i'm sure because god's not a jerk 
most of the time. <laughs> he, um, he gave more than one meaning it, to that laughter. I'm sure there was also laughter of true joy and not just to remind Sarah of her laughter of skepticism and maybe even derision. Cynicism. Um, cynicism. Yeah, it's a real good way to uh, label it. So advance about 25, 30 years. Isaac is a man. And uh, Abraham is an old man. He's already had his um, triple digit birthday. <laughs> and God says, Abraham, I, I want to make sure that you love me the most. And Abraham says, dude, of course I do. How could I not? You've given me my heart's desire. And God tells him, I want you to give me back your heart's desire. I want you to take Isaac and I want you to go to Mount Moriah and I want you to sacrifice him as a burnt offering. Interesting enough, that word in Hebrew is Holocaust, which again, unpacks all sorts of um, horrible emotions for me. When I think about the Holocaust, it's so violent. And I mean, when is a burning death not violent? Of course, it, it is very violent. Um, so, Abraham, Isaac, did you have something uh, to say, Rick? Go ahead. I was just going to mention, uh, it's, uh, I'm actually looking up the origin of Holocaust. Um, oh, wow. It literally means it comes from the Latin uh, in Greek, holocauston, or from holos, which means whole, you might have guessed. Kaustos literally means burn, so wholly burned. Um, that's to, pretty, to burn. pretty clear. And I was just going to, actually, I wasn't even going to mention that, but in Spanish, that's the word we use for burnt sacrifices, holocausto. That's the, also the Tripped word when I that first is learned usually Spanish. used in, in Hebrew for a burnt mm -hmm. offering as well. It's the yeah. holocaust. Right. Um, or it is a Holocaust. Um, Correct. So Abraham and Isaac start gathering up the wood for the sacrifice. They take two servant men and they head for three days to Mount Moriah. During that time in Isaac's eye, uh, sorry, in Abraham's eyes, Isaac's dead. Because he knows mm -hmm. what he is going to do. He has purposed, I will do what God asked me to do. Mm -hmm. And he's also thinking, this, this, this guy right here, this 30 some odd year old guy is the promise to make a nation. So I don't know what God's going to do. I guess he's going to bring him back from the dead. He can do it. And you, you, there's something very interesting about what you're saying shell because when, when you said that you know as far as abraham was concerned he was we would say in english right he's as good as dad right mm -hmm, so that's mm -hmm. the the common phraseology would we would be but I, I think it's very telling that you said he was dead um as far as abraham was concerned it wasn't you know he was as good as dead like abraham was like my kid's dead he's gone you know what can i do and you're right he he did expect god to to raise him back from the dead What's interesting to me is that in lieu of the Holocaust itself, God accepted Abraham's action as the Holocaust. So That obedience, yeah, yeah. Correct. Because of the action, because of Abraham's obedience in action and in resolve, he had essentially already done it. And so God was like, there's no need to follow through, which is kind of crazy it is it brings, brings they, up the whole hebrew uh faith and faith with works and how does mm -hmm. one work without the other right yeah. yeah yeah it does what jesus says about if you've sinned in your heart then you've already done you've it you've sinned god I mean, well it's and that's what yeah, the word ahead. says saying, it's so um, intentional Abra abraham's faith was accredited to him as righteousness as righteousness, as righteousness. That's crazy. It's, it is the one, the one is the other. And yeah, that's hard. That's hard. Cause we like to earn things. That's hard. 
Um, but no, you're Very you're important. right. So Abraham figures, I guess God's going to raise him from the dead. Whatever. This is where my my descendants, too numerous to count, more than the stars, are going to come from. Mm. And the four <clears throat> men set out for the three day journey from where they're at. And sorry, guys, I don't remember where they were at the time. <laughs> Three days away from Mount Moriah, a good, a good walk. <laughs> the Bible, the Bible does give where it is. I just don't have Genesis 22 open right now. So um, I don't know. Somewhere in his, Somewhere in Israel, in modern day Israel, that's for sure, because Mount Moriah is um, the Temple Mount, or at least part of that, the Mount of Olives chain, um, just like Golgotha. And we're, we're going to see um, some major similarities between this, this Isaac sacrifice and the sacrifice that Jesus um, was going to make a couple thousand years later. Did you find where it was, Rick? I think so. Um, <clears throat> at the very end of all, I mean, right before we get to 22, um, you, you know, which is the whole story about Hagar and everything and, and mm-hmm. uh, Ishmael and all that, um, comes, uh, it, it literally says at the very last verse, and Abraham stayed in the land of the Philistines for a long time. And then the following verse, which is 22, Sometime later, God tested Abraham and he said, Abraham, here I am. Take your son to Mount Moriah. Okay. So wherever the I, Philistines were at that time. I'm and you know what? Sure. I know I know that there are some biblical archaeologists who um, have said where it is. I just don't remember. I feel like it's a be it something. But anyway, um, so Mount Moriah. That's where we are. They get to Mount Moriah. They set the stones up to make an altar. And they put... um, Oh, no. Sorry. I have to back up a little bit because there's a pivotal point here when they're walking um, to Moriah. Mm -hmm. And Isaac asks his dad, he says... And he's, he's... I'm a, I'm somebody who grew up in the church. Rick, you too. Do you ever remember mm-hmm. the coloring page of this incident? <laughs> it's like some buff dude and some seven-year-old child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that that's not the reality. The reality is some tottering old dude and some buff dude who is the sacrifice. At yep. any time, Isaac could have said, mm, man not having any of this we're good i'm out but that is not what what happened abraham didn't overpower isaac isaac went willingly and now i don't think isaac went super willingly because he said hey dad um i see we brought the wood for this holocaust but where's the lamb yeah where's our sacrifice and in Genesis 22, 8, um, our pivotal scripture, Abraham answers. And he says, I'm going to read this one. Rick, would you, you have the it. other one, um, the other version. So uh, mine says, God will provide himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. That is what Abraham says. And um, It's interesting the way the way it is in ricky's um version i think parses it a little bit better go ahead rick yeah it says god himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering my son i like um how god will provide himself because it's what he did he provided himself the lamb he became the lamb for the sacrifice, not a burnt offering in the end, um, but the sufficient sacrifice, the only one that would suffice. Mm. So, Word. so they get all the the rest of the way. I mean, I'm sure Isaac wasn't thrilled, right? Oh, great, that's a fantastic answer, pops. <laughs> and you cool. know what? At cool that story, time. Bro. 
I right. I don't know <laughs> how, like, what kind of a relationship Isaac and God had. I assume that that they had a relationship, and it wasn't it wasn't Yahweh, the God of my father uh, Abraham. I think. I'm going to to assume at this point that he was already Yahweh, the God of Abraham and Isaac. Um, yeah, one would have to believe uh, that that's the case. He, How he went willingly, not? right? Yeah, right. Exactly. He he went volition. willingly. There was no right. there there was no compulsion there. Um, right. So they go the rest of the way up to the mountain stack the stones up right for some reason um abraham binds isaac uh, his hands and i think it's symbolic um for christ being bound to the cross um i mean the the scripture here doesn't actually uh say that but when we look at isaac um as a type of christ here it it meshes really well. It's, it's, it's pretty simpatico. Well, it, it, I mean, traditionally, right. When you were going to do a Holocaust, right. You had to tie up the creature. There wasn't much other way. You kind of wanted to keep everything all together because you don't want not to be crude, but stuff kind of <laughs> floating all over the place and falling off the altar and all that good jazz. Right. I mean, you want to keep it all in one spot. Although eventually the bounds would be burned through, but <laughs> Any, anyhow, not to go too terribly morbid. <laughs> Super medieval. <laughs> like the two guys, though, that are with them, I don't know if they do anything. Maybe they carry wood, too, and it's not just Isaac carrying the wood to his place of sacrifice. Sure. Just like Jesus carried his wood to the place of sacrifice amongst two other men who could do nothing for him, also carrying wood to the place of sacrifice um, on the same mountain range, just on Golgotha instead of Moriah. Well, at least the name Golgotha instead of Moriah. Um, a lot of biblical scholars believe same, same, same hill. Um, go ahead. You sure you want to go? I'm not going to say that. Gonna be... I just, okay, then go. <laughs> um, I just, I just think it's super interesting that there's um, at least a tacit or tangential evidence that potentially Golgotha is the same place where Goliath was slain. Um, that's kind of crazy stuff right there. Um, <laughs> that was from, um, I heard that on um, a view from the bunker. Uh, with uh, uh, with Derek Gilbert, Derek Garrett. Yep. Gilbert and his Gilbert, sorry, group, yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> so all sorts Shout of Christ typology good, and good overcoming podcast. everything. It's crazy. Go ahead. That's right. all Tons say. of typology there, like like so so much. Um, okay, I'll I'll speed it up. We we get to the mountain rocks. Isaac's bound. He's laid upon the wood. And Abraham raises the knife. I mean, it, it, incidentally, there that knife is a very special knife. The, the The word for that knife is only used one other time in the oh. Bible, <clears throat> and it's it's that ugh, it's a gross story where um, oh. the woman is dismembered. Now well, I they, can't remember. They send all the pieces to all the tribes. Yeah, to say that this is unacceptable, we can't do this. Right. Um, if you want to know what story we're talking about, it's in the Old Testament. You can find it. <laughs> you know, it's... Shell, that's the one where, where... What city does that happen in? That's the one where, where the two men that they're... Basically wanted to have sex with those two guys. Oh, that's right? Sodom. And, right? It's Sodom. I don't... It's Sodom where... Oh, yeah. No, okay, that's all you get. Stories. Yeah, you guys can yeah. can get the rest of it. I think it is still still in this time period. So you don't even have to read far. You're still in the book of Genesis. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 
Anyway, we won't go into that because it's, man, I'm just going to do It's hard to caveat, stay on topic. Caveat. I know because what's, so what's still coming down the pipeline, we've been giving you guys little tidbits, but what's coming down the pipeline is like, it's, it's hard to unsee reality once you've seen reality, oh, man. And man, like the true. Bible is, it's the coolest freaking story ever. Like it's the one story that makes sense of all of it. Um, it does. And we'll say, so anyway, you just say we will give you one spoiler. And I, we've already said this term before, but divine council worldview. Yeah. Divine yeah. council worldview. Okay, back to our regularly scheduled program. Knife is raised. Abraham is ready to plunge it into his son's heart because even though he's willing to set his son as a burnt offering, think about that. Like he expected God to raise the ashes, the ashes of his burnt, completely hmm. burnt up son back to be able to create a nation dude mm. that's insane wow no wonder that. his no wonder his faith is credited to him as righteousness I, that's I had all, faith it, it is the only thing i had ever considered was that he kill his like physically kill his son you know the, the stabbing and then god would raise him but i hadn't thought about the fact that he would be burned I'm not going to lie. I haven't either until right wow. now. That's, yeah, that's, I don't know. That's intense. Cause I, I have family members who would not be cremated because they're afraid that might be just a little bit too much for Jesus. Well, if you're Abraham's <laughs> son, you would be. You know. <laughs> Jeez. So wow. God says, Abraham, Abraham. And Abraham's like, <laughs> yes <laughs> you know like i was right in the middle am, of something I'm like <laughs> sure like hold on let me set my knife aside <laughs> yeah. and he says i know i know that you love me and doesn't he say i, I know that you love me now or now i know that you love me it's just it's so like, crazy like god didn't know what a funny what a funny and of course it. he did yeah. But what a what a wonderful example of obedience in in um how we're supposed to follow. But God God tells him, yeah. Don't worry, I, I have your sacrifice. Wow. Let your son up. Let your son up. Hey, Any I, Yes. I, I want you to, to check something for me. What does verse twelve say? How does your how does it read in your, your version? Oh man. Uh, it's man. it's the same thing you're talking about right now. I'm just curious. I, now I have to look. You have to give me a give me, I'll, I'll read mine real quick. It says, okay. Um, actually, I'll go to verse 11 real quick. So, but the, but the angel of the Lord called out from him, uh, called out to him from heaven. Um, that angel of the Lord, you guys might want to look up that uh, term as well. <laughs> like I said, that's, um, that's yeah. the, the second Yahweh. Yep. The, and he says, Abraham, Abraham, powers. here I am. He replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy. I don't know about boy, but we'll just go with it. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God. I knew you loved me, but I wasn't super sure about your respect for me. That's a thing. The um, a complete Jewish Bible says... Uh, but the angel of Adonai called out to called to him out of heaven, Avram, Avram. He answered, "Here I am." He said, "Do not lay your hand on the boy. Do not do any, or don't do anything to him. For now I know that you are a man who fears God, because you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me." Well, that was super relevant. Didn't didn't mean it for it to play out that way, but. <laughs> <laughs> And there's a lot of uh, belief that in in um, uh, those olden days gone by that a man was not really considered a man until like his 30s. Um, right. And it, but a woman was considered a woman at 12 or 14. 
but I mean, I get it. A lot of women died in childbirth and blah, blah, blah. And he needed to be able to provide for his family. And, you know, I don't, it, it, putting aside um, egocentrism and um, thinking that our culture is the only culture and looking at everything through the lens of our culture. Um, he wasn't a, a boy, but apparently maybe he wasn't totally a man, but we know physically he was capable of knocking his dad out. But yeah, your son, your only son. Mm. So then Avram raised his eyes and looked and there behind him was a ram caught in the bushes by its horn. Avram went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering in place of his son. So in verse 8, um, Abraham had said, or yeah, Abraham had said, God will provide himself the lamb. And instead, what was in the thicket is a ram. And even though they sound alike, they are not the same thing. I know it's a joke. <laughs> ram and a lamb. A ram and a lamb. So we know <laughs> a ram and a lamb. Ding dong. No, what? nothing. A ram and a lamb. Ding dong. Ram a lamb. A ding dong. Oh my gosh. Oh come on. Oh my wah, gosh. Wah, wah. Okay, sometimes it was your, a fail. Jokes, you, you, sometimes your jokes you are more dad that joke than mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love a good dad joke or a, a fun pun. Was, They're my faves. Not gonna lie. That was that was some some like deep dish dad joke right there. <laughs> you know what? A ram and a lamb. Ram ding ding dong. Like that could also be a shirt. I'm just saying, trademark. Could be. Could be. Ram For your a lamb. A ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> I make myself laugh. Sorry, guy. <laughs> Double for your trouble. <laughs> End result, no lamb there. There's no lamb there. But obviously, there is so, so much um, promise in that passage. The, the promise that there would be a lamb. The promise of a sacrifice. The promise of resurrection. Um. The promise of resurrection there has escaped me before. Um, but and there there are a lot of people who say, oh, resurrection is just a Christian thing. Nobody ever thought of that before those Christians. But that's not true. It goes all the way back, man. Genesis 22. That's 22. The 22nd chapter in of a, I don't know, thousands of chapters book. So. That's pretty much beginning. We're still almost in the prologue. And the <laughs> and and the yeah. promise of a lamb and a promise of a resurrection and kind of even a hinting at where everything was going to take place with Jesus. You know what? Like Sometimes I'm amazed at how stupid our enemy is sometimes. How did he not get Golgotha? How how was he not sweating as Jesus was being led up the Via Dolorosa? You know, Shell, it you're right. I mean, it's unbelievable hubris, but at the same time, Sometimes I'm not that surprised because we always expect God to do something in a certain way and it never pans out like that. Like, like never like pans my incident out today. <laughs> like your incident today. It just never pans out the way you expect it. You know, a lot of times like today, even for me, like I was like, Man, I wish God God, I wish you would change this, you know, I've been praying about this and blah blah. And instead of God being like, because I'm, I, it's, that's, I, I don't like to like overdo it because I'm like, I, I don't, I don't need the supernatural at every second. You know, it's always nice, but it's not, it's not, it's, it's not what I'm seeking. You know, I want to seek the face of God himself. I don't want to seek what he can do. You know, all those are 
Um, all those things are added unto us, right? By seeking right. his kingdom. Um, and him. And and to, but it's always nice when you think, man, I wish somebody would give me a word or, or God would, you know, do something supernatural. And I was kind of feeling that way a little bit today, which is, you know, like feeling like a bum, basically. Like, oh, I feel so bad. You know, it happens. We all feel that way sometimes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But the preaching was the opposite. It was like, stand up, speak life over yourself, move forward, trust God to do the things that you haven't seen yet. Just do it. Just move. And I was like, man, it's not what I wanted to hear, but that's what I needed to hear. And it, it wouldn't have been my way of choosing God to speak to me. I, and I wouldn't have thought God was going to speak to me that way, you know? Well, in that speaking, it's not like you changed anything. What you did is you reminded yourself of what God has already promised. And and we need to do that because we start listening to all the other voices because they're loud and they are insistent and relentless and they tell us all the lies that diminish us and make us feel like nothing Mm -hmm. and then God says I have redeemed you I have called you by name child Mm -hmm. you're mine you're mine I have designed you for this time for this purpose um you're fearfully and wonderfully made before the foundations of the earth. I knew you and already your, your life was put in my book. You know, David says your eyes saw my unformed body and, and you'll hear me say that so much because that Psalm 139 is truth that my soul needs a lot to hear. And I think most other people too. So you'll hear me say it a lot. We have to remember those things. Did it change? Did did I speak? Did did my words have some sort of power that altered the universe? My words had power that altered my brain, altered my thoughts, took my thoughts, like you said earlier today, Rick, um, captive, took my thoughts that were going everywhere and and really pulling me along like it's puppet and takes them back captive and says, no, this is the truth. You have to be under this truth. And we realign, man, I have to do a lot of realignment. I realign all the time, either with God's word or, or, um, uh, praying or a lot of times, like you said, speaking the truth the truth that I know and you can't speak the truth until you get the truth in you. So you, you got to go to his word and have the truth in you because it's something that my, my pastor said that was really cool. Shout out to pastor Marla, by the way, she's the one that said that. And I, I, she was the one talking about taking every captive thought. I didn't say that. Um, I am now, but, uh, (laughs) but my pastor said something really interesting to me one time. And he says, he says, how, how can you build your faith if no one's there? And I was like, what, what do you mean? He goes, right, well, what is the word, how does the word say that faith comes? Faith comes by hearing, right, and hearing the word of God. How can you build your own faith? And I was, this is at a, a men's breakfast, you know, just, we, I'm sorry, <laughs> men's devotional. And we're all sitting there like, what? Is He's this like, a trick question? The, yeah, I know. <laughs> and he goes, you literally need to pick up the word of God and read it out loud to yourself because you're hearing the word of God. And I went, oh, jeez. Oh, that's good My stuff. pastor said something along those lines today, and I'll share really? that too. What he well, what he said is, um, he was saying it, it was the end of service, but he was saying you need to pray out loud. Only God knows what's in our heart, and we can pray in our heart. God hears it; He hears it. We know what we're praying. You and God know what you're praying about. Yeah. But when you speak that prayer out loud, you are saying, this is what I'm siding with. This yeah. is whose side I am on. And you let the enemy know. And and I know sometimes that's scary because we, the 18 minutes a day, Christians remember that there is a devil and that there, there, <laughs> that there is an enemy out to get us. You know, when your car doesn't start, somebody cuts you off. Seconds. Or it might only be 18 seconds. I'm just saying. 
um, where, you know, we give him all this power and then we're so afraid for him to know, no, 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 dude, you better know my name because I, I, you're not going to say to me, Jesus, I know Peter, I know, but who are you? Oh, no, no. You, you know me. I I'm Shelly. You, you take my name because I've got yours and I know who lives in me and he is greater than you are. And you might have some strength and you are spending every second of every day out to get me and all the rest of um, all the rest of humanity, not even just God's children, humanity, all of God's people that he has made, whether they choose him or not, you're that, that enemy, that group of enemies is active in this world right now, looking to destroy us, looking to separate us, um, from one another in, in families and churches, um, uh, in groups of friends, whatever he, God is about unity. Satan's about disunity. He is, he is about destroying <laughs> us. He's, he's voracious. You know, we say it's prowling around like a roaring lion looking for somebody to devour, looking to devour everywhere, but he's way more hungry than a lion. He is hungry like the grave. The grave's yeah. mouth is always open, always consuming. And that's what our enemy is and who he is. And he yeah. is always looking for us. But God said, he said, man, I leave you so much power with the Holy Spirit. Greater is he who is in me. And that's only the Holy Spirit. It certainly isn't me. Then then the one conniving in the world to get us. So speak your mm -hmm. prayers. Speak them out loud. Make your position known. I really feel <clears throat> led to by the Holy Spirit to say this right now. Um, if you're watching this podcast, and you will be at some point, you need to hear that there's a difference between the roaring lion, which is the which is, is the Satan, right, which is the adversary, and the lion and the lamb, which is Jesus. Oh, that's What's right. I am not talking about that lion, right? What's the difference? The roaring lion is boastful, arrogant, and has to presume himself before people has to make himself huge and big because he's not. So and you know what? At the end, we'll talk about the lion in Revelation. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and he has he, no need to, to speak to and be roar. boastful. He, no. he owns his own territory and the devil doesn't. That's why you need to mm. speak the words of God and pray the words of God over your life audibly for yourself because he, the, the devil is going to keep talking. And he's not going to shut up. That's why he's a roaring lion. You need to shut him out and let the peace of God come over you and take captive every thought. Sorry. That's right. Just had That's to say good. It. Not no, sorry. Had to say it. Not sorry. <clears throat> uh, boy, we got off track, although not a bad track. So Yeah. <laughs> sorry. I'll, I'll take it. Nope. Still good. So we were at the Lamb is still to come at the end of this yes. um, incident at Mount Moriah. And um, we know that eventually the lamb does come. And the yep. first the first time um, we really see like the good, very clear, at least really clear to me image of what what the sacrificial lamb really looks like is in Exodus 21. So fast forward about 450 years, 475 years ish from, from Mount Moriah to the, um, the middle of a big Egyptian city where the Israelites have gone from being um, respected visiting dignitaries to slaves that are so mm. numerous that pharaoh has decided let's start killing them there's too many of them if they keep doing this they're gonna rise up um and then i um i am going to guess that most people in america whether they're christian or not know about the name moses they may not have much of a an idea really of who Moses is. Moses is another uh, type of Christ. He is um, Christos typology. 
oh yeah it's it's right there that you you can't get away from it you cannot get away from it um moses tells pharaoh let my people go pharaoh man let my people go and um there are a series of plagues that happen and you know what 